Hello and welcome to Glassnode Academy. Today we're looking at a Bitcoin metric called the Holloways, which provides a very macro view over the proportion of supply that falls into different age categories. So we'll quickly run over what the inputs are to the hollow waves and what the fundamentals are of the metric. We'll look at how we consider hollow waves in our market analysis. And we'll also use some of Glassnode Studio's tools to actually visualize some of the specific trends that the hollow waves provides insight on. So the hollow waves take the entire supply of coins and it categorizes it out by lifespan. So we develop a series of age bands, could be one year to two year, two year to three year. And then on the lower side, we have down to the hourly, one day to one week, one week to one month. So we categorize out the entire supply depending on when each UTXO was created. And what this provides is a relative view on the age of the supply. We can see the proportion of old coins versus young coins. And when we see changes in the trend of these different brands, it gives us a view of the macro spending or accumulation patterns that are going on in the market. So key values that we're looking for is if you're getting an increasing of young coins or the, the, the younger age bands are expanding in size and having a large proportion of supply, it's telling us that some of those older coins are being spent, turning from old to new, old to young, and increasing that liquid supply. And conversely, when we're seeing the older age bands expanding, we're seeing dormancy increasing. There's an accumulation or a hodling that's going on as young coins mature into older coins. So let's now jump into Glassnode Studio and we'll have a look at hodl waves in practice. So this is a view of the hodl waves, the Bitcoin hodl waves, and you can see we have a series of, the, of these color bands that range from warmer colors, which represent younger coins. At the very bottom, we've got red representing a 24 hour or coins that were spent within the last day. And as we move up into cooler colors, we start talking about multi-year old coins. And then up in the purple space, we're talking about coins that have been dormant for over 10 years. So what we can really pull from the, the hotter waves is quite a number of layers of analysis. So you can see that over time, we get changing proportions of these different bands. We get areas where we get a lot more of the young coins, the warmer colors take up a larger portion of the, of the overall supply. And that's suggesting that those older coins have more or less been spent into action and, and reset their lifespans back to zero. Now, you can also see that over time, we get a growing proportion of older coins. And that's really a function of the overall protocol age. So clearly, we can only really get coins that are 10 years old after the protocol has been around for 10 years. Some of these coins that we represent in here represent lost coins. So we can use the hodl waves to establish what kind of dormancy do we have overall in the market. Um, generally, we can assume that coins that have been around or haven't moved for seven, 10 years, there's a relatively high chance that some of those are going to be lost coins, whereas coins that have been spent in recent times, they're a lot more likely to be spent again. So when we look at the different variations between these colorations and the different uh, changes over time, it tells us about how the supply is moving. Are those old coins being spent to become young coins? Or do we have the converse where we've got expanding cooler colors, which means that coins are actually going from a young state and remaining dormant and maturing into those older coins. So another useful tool that we can do is actually use our legend items. So we can, for example, turn off. So if you click on any of these legend items, you can see that we can turn off certain sections of the market. And if we now look at only coins that are up to six months old, so we've got our 24 hour coins all the way up to coins that are at maximum six months, and we've turned off our other color bands to provide us just that little bit of clarity so we can see some of the trends a bit better. And you can see that particularly during periods of market volatility around market tops, we tend to get these correlating peaks as some of those older coins are essentially spent into market strength, realizing some of those profits along the path of the bull market, and then following into more bearish trends where you're getting a reduction in those, in those younger coins. So the falling away of those young coin bands is telling us that those coins are going more into dormancy. We're seeing more of an accumulation behavior going on during bearish markets. And then during bullish markets, we're getting a lot more spending. Those older coins are converting from an old state to a young state. And that's then increasing the warmer colors of the hotel waves. Now, we can also go the opposite direction and we can put on only our older coins. And we can actually see the converse effect. So when we're talking about during bullish, bullish markets and these large impulses upwards, you can see that overall, the older coins are actually reducing in total proportion of supply. And then during our bearish markets, we get a swelling of these older bands as those, older, those younger coins essentially mature to become older over time. Now, a very important nuance to just keep in mind with the hotel waves is that when you spend an old coin, the impact on hotel waves in the younger bands is immediate. And you can see that our younger bands are actually much smaller in terms of their 
um, uh, they're increments. So we're talking about 24 hours. We're talking about one day to a week, one week to a month. Whereas once we move into the older coins, we have bands of sometimes multiple years. So when a coin is spent from old to young, it's an immediate effect and we will see immediate impact into the younger coin age bands. Conversely, the time it takes a young coin to mature into an older coin will take time. So if our lower bound of this is three to six months, it will take three months for a coin to transition from the one month to three month band into the three month to six month band. So in general, our older coins are normally offset by whatever their lower bound is for each particular band. So that's just an important nuance to keep in mind that there will be some offset when it comes to the maturation, whereas when we're talking about older coins being spent and becoming young coins, that's an immediate impact.